Awesome Japan is a localization company that specializes in promotion, which these days means exporting Japanese Kickstarter campaigns to English-speaking audiences. They've been active on Kickstarter since July 2014, and over that year, six of their 13 projects were unsuccessful. Despite their inexperience and despite their 53% success rate, they somehow found themselves co-managing Shinmu 3. And they may just be one of many reasons why one of the most controversial and divisive Kickstarters ever was also one of the most successful. Shinmu 3 was announced on stage at Sony's E3 press conference on June 15th, 2015. The sequel's low fundraising goal compared to its predecessors and its big-time stage presence suggested some kind of financial relationship with Sony. It immediately triggered the suspicions of many skeptics, myself included, which didn't stop it from meeting its $2 million funding goal within one day. The game was introduced to us with these words. Now this is very much their project but we wanted to celebrate their announcement on our stage, since this is a game that PlayStation fans have been very, very, very vocal about. Yet one day later, it was confirmed that it was, in some undisclosed but known way, Sony's game as well. The extent of the relationship between Shinmu and Sony is a topic that started zigzagging back and forth one day later, when Giovanni Corsi, PlayStation's director of third-party relations, confirmed on a live stream that Sony and PlayStation is definitely a partner in this game, and it's going to be run through uh, third-party production. We're going to help YSNet get the game done. We're going to be partners on it the whole way, and really excited to see this thing come out in a couple of years. On July 17th, while E3 was still happening, an interview with Shuhei Yoshida has him saying, our third-party relations team struck a deal to help kickstart the campaign at the E3 conference, which doesn't necessarily claim they're investing money, but rather just stage time towards the game. Meanwhile, in Japan, this issue of Famitsu Weekly included an interview with Yu Suzuki in which he says, according to a translation on Shinmu Dojo, that after a talk about Shinmu at GDC 2014, Sony and Sega both pushed for him to make another game. Sega by agreeably giving him the license, and Sony Computer Entertainment by giving him the support. This interview does shed light on at least one question about the game's strangely paltry $2 million goal, which is a lot by Kickstarter standards, but a drop in the bucket by the first two games' $47 million budget. According to Yu Suzuki, the $2 million would have been needed to make a minimal version of Shinmu 3, as a mostly story-driven game. A few lines earlier, he was noting that some fans were even suggesting that it just do a novel or manga. It's an insightful interview, it actually explains a whole lot, but shortly after it went up, a quote started floating around, originating from a NeoGAF post that claims that in this interview, Yu Suzuki says he expects the game's investment will primarily come from individual backers, so he wants them all to be happy with the finished product. Doesn't sound like Sony and others are giving him that much. And that would have cleared the issue all the way up. After all, the biggest question behind this whole story that no one involved has understandably yet answered is the ratio between public and private funding. But this quote would seem to answer that. However, according to two other different translations on the Shinmu Dojo forums of that same interview, that answer makes no mention of the budget portioning at all. I got six Japanese-speaking fans of the channel to all look at this interview, and they all came back to me with the same answer. The quote was likely to be a misinterpretation. The confusion stems over this line, in which Suzuki answers an interview question about creating the game alongside the fans. His reply, according to two other forum translations as well as the people I consulted with, says individual fans are the primary motivational or creative factor, but according to this other version, they're the primary financial factor, and that's the version that got all the attention. This bit of translation telephone ran the internet activism game by fueling hashtag campaigns and editorials by fans who finally thought they had the info they needed, as the stakes for the Kickstarter increased higher. Because the initial $2 million goal stretched out five-fold when Yu Suzuki said during a June 19th Reddit AMA that $10 million would be needed to truly have the features of an open world. What exactly that means, and whether or not that would need to be $10 million in Kickstarter money or other money, was not elaborated. It was another vague quote. And it was bizarre. No game software has come close to that on Kickstarter. Bloodstain and Shinmu respectively ended in the 5 and 6 millions, and the Ouya console landed halfway past 8 million. A few days later, Cedric Biscay, CEO of Shibuya Productions, said that Sony would be financing the PS4 version and handling the advertising, which was already demonstrated at E3. 
and that they also wouldn't be getting any of that Kickstarter money. On June 24th, the Kickstarter was updated with a statement by Yu Suzuki, confirming from Suzuki himself in English through an official translator that Sony and Shibuya invested in this project. Specifics could not be discussed, but the partnership is definitely there, using words like production, marketing, and for Sony specifically, some publishing support. Shibuya Productions is a company based in Monaco that will be co-producing and promoting Shinmu 3. It was about a week after that budget statement, on July 7th, that I began to reach out and got an email from Cedric Biscay himself. He says his company's role in Shinmu 3 is to co-produce and promote the game, as well as give advice for it that Yu Suzuki has no obligation to follow. Suzuki will be adding new features to the game depending on the money they get, but it would have been impossible to make the game with two or five million dollars in the first place, saying that it is important to have partners in order to make this happen. But that message was not clearly communicated during the first few days of the originally $2 million campaign. And this is where Awesome Japan comes back in. Their previous Kickstarters were rife with spelling and grammar errors, and video production that wasn't exactly top tier. In Shinmu's case, conveying an agreeable, easy-to-understand message about how the Kickstarter fundraiser would scale to the final game's scope, and of how industry-supported Shinmu 3 would be, wasn't exactly nailed either. Whoever was in charge of the video, the images, the stretch goals here didn't exactly make materials that looked ready to hinge on millions of dollars of work. The emotional appeal, though, and the stage presence behind the campaign were brilliantly successful. The Save Shinmu hashtag is still active, and the E3 reveal had them smashing their goal within a day. But in the meantime, they were tossing around some very strange stretch goals and backer tiers that got stranger as the project was updated. 6.5 million gets them Ragdoll Reaction. An $80 pledge earns you an in-game calling card that unlocks in-game phone conversations that are, for now, exclusive to backers on that tier and up. In-depth explanations behind the hows and whys of many of these features, even including that $10 million open world, can be found elsewhere, but once again translated unofficially through third-party sources, through fans on fan forums. You really have to dig for that stuff. These explanations didn't end up where they mattered, in the hands of English-speaking media outlets or on the Kickstarter page itself. How's our mic, how's our mic man back there? Are we okay? These problems with their management company became exacerbated on June 27th, during a Twitch Q&A stream riddled with audio problems, video problems, and a good dose of awkward screen presence. And everyone's language barrier here might have had a whole lot to do with all of this campaign's troubles. Almost all the big names involved in managing this Kickstarter either speak French or Japanese first, and English second. Their writing isn't perfect, and that sheds some light on a lot of those vague, buzzword-heavy quotes from Suzuki and the suspicious language on the Kickstarter page. But all those problems didn't stop the campaign from succeeding. It tripled that goal, landed $6.333 million in public funding from fans who just wanted to see this game happen, despite all the controversies, the fine print, and the translation issues. And since hindsight is 2020, it is now easy to imagine that controversy not happening at all, if they were just more upfront about partnering with Sony during those first three days. So far we have been funded by a private investor, and the cost of what you just saw is about $1.5 million. Bloodstained and Kingdom Come were two successful Kickstarters that were open about their private investors from day one, and they managed to avoid a similar scope of this controversy entirely. It's not uncommon for Kickstarter goals to not be a game's entire development budget, nor for them to also have private and anonymous investors in addition to the public's donations. But despite how many times it had been said over and over again, there was always some other bit of far-fetched interpretation being used as evidence to suggest that the Sony partnership wasn't happening or that it didn't mean what people wanted it to mean depending on what they wanted it to mean. It's not likely to be like a fully Sony-published game, and it's not likely to be fully hands-off from them either. And I say likely because splitting hairs over how much influence Sony has over this project is, at this point, pure speculation. As far as the facts go, there was never any information confirming how much creative control they have over the project, nor how big their stake in the project's budget actually is. And the only quote that seemed to clarify that was not reliably accurate. Sony's incentive for a Shinmu 3 exclusive to only the PlayStation consoles is there. It is, as Shuhei Yoshida said, great PR. 
they struck a deal. But really, weigh the pros and the cons and the consequences of why that would be a concern in the first place. Well, console exclusivity is one con. A fear of big publishers exerting control over small, passion-driven indie projects is another. But consider the names involved here. Among the big mega-publishers, SCE has probably the friendliest track record of pushing out quality third-party indie games for their platform. And Yu Suzuki is a beloved classic developer who is competing neck-and-neck -neck with the likes of Shigeru Miyamoto back in the 80s. The controversy over Shinmu 3's funding seems to stem from two concerns. One is a very traceable issue over how this game's dependency was disclosed, and the other concern is much more abstract. It has to do with idealism. It's about whether or not Kickstarter can harbor truly independent games at all. Both concerns rely on assumptions and opinions, but those assumptions and the context behind them paint an all-too-real picture about how Kickstarters could be used for projects that only halfway need those funds, taking advantage of crowdfunding resources in ways some of the crowd would consider exploitive. Securing funding, minimizing risk, and meeting milestones by using a group who typically isn't faced with that burden. And whether or not that's a bad thing is something I don't think I'm ready to decide on. It just seems risky, it's unprecedented, and it's unpredictable. These fans, who love these brands enough to willingly gamble with their money, are doing it by their own volition to make something they want that wouldn't be happening without them. Their money is going exactly where they want it to. What is a valid concern are the mistakes made by the PR and marketing folks in charge of this Kickstarter. Those mistakes are what we can learn from for the future. Fans would feel more comfortable donating to a project that they know needs the money, and by failing to paint an accurate picture of how Shinmu 3 needed that money, due in large part by an inexperienced company not ready for a campaign of this size, they've made it one of the most controversial, rocky, bumbling, and questionable, record-smashing successes in recent history.